Okay. So back to where we left. Now I just before going to to uh, today's topic. Today's topic will be mostly what we will be discussing is what happens in the E and F region because D almost we have finished. Now, uh, regarding D, we have uh, certain things which uh, we, we now know and also we must be very clear that D region is different in terms of species, ionic species or the other two layers E and F. Because as we have seen, the D is a region where we get negative ions. The negative ions are not available anywhere else. We won't get, now we'll see when we discuss E and F. We'll see that uh, negative ions are not nearly, not possible in E and F region. And also, because of this, this N minus means negative ions with respect to the negative uh, electrons, that ratio lambda, that ratio lambda is large, that means you have, you have uh, more, a large number of negative ions, negative ions with respect to uh, the number of electrons. Now this determines a, a, a uh, coefficient which we call the effective coefficient, effective recombination coefficient, okay? That equation you must have seen, that last equation which we have shown, the last equation, one plus lambda multiplied by again one plus lambda and uh, any square. So that any square, any square is the number of electrons squared. Now in the in the D region, in the D region, you 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 uh, already we have mentioned and already we also know that lambda is large. Lambda is large means that ratio is not equal to zero. Lambda is not equal to zero in the D region. If Q is equal to zero, when production is equal to zero, the effective recombination also becomes equal to zero. So what Practically, this means practically this means that uh, the number of electrons has to be equal to zero. The number of charged electrons has to be equal to zero, because <clears throat> because uh, if um, one is not zero, lambda is also not zero, but when Q is zero, when Q is zero effective recombination coefficient is zero and therefore and therefore you have you have because lambda is not zero so what can be zero only any any can be zero that means when you do not have production at night your number of electrons will be very very less maybe um, when we talk in terms of zero when you talk in terms of zero it is not absolute zero because in the ionosphere, there will always be some processes going on. Even if it is very uh, less detectable, there will be some processes going on. So you, it will always tend to zero, not exactly zero. But even then, production source is zero. So your effective recombination coefficient is zero and therefore your N is equal to zero. That means the D region finishes. The D region, D region, there is no, no charged particles. There is N is equal to N plus. N is equal to N plus, okay? So number of positive ions and number of negative ions should be equal. And uh, when N is equal to zero, that means there are no positive ions also. And therefore, you have a neutral atmosphere. So at night, the D region has finished. Now, when the D region vanishes, what happens exactly to radio communication? We have some idea. Do we, do we listen to radio? How many of you have radio at home? 
or would you? No one? Because it is not necessary in these days. Yes. I am not showing anything. I am talking only. I am not showing anything. Okay. Okay. So uh, at night, actually, if if you if you have a medium wave radio now these days, medium wave radios are rare. Mostly, all radios have become FM, as you know. And uh, listen, people listen to FM because of, uh, there are is more. Um, options available in terms of music, in terms of news, etc. Medium wave is always limited and therefore normally except for people who are accustomed to listening to medium wave, people do not listen to medium wave. But my point is during the daytime you will be able to receive medium wave only from the nearby station because your ionosphere is low that bottom bottom of the ionosphere is starting at about 60 kilometer or 65 kilometer so the ionosphere is deep down deep down during the daytime because of the presence of the region and therefore the the <clears throat> distance covered by the radio station for uh, this uh, reflection to the receiver, to that, that means to the listener, is less. As the D region vanishes, if you if you if you tune a medium of radio station, you will see at night you will also listen to many stations from across the border, many Chinese stations, and sometimes some Bangladesh stations also. You will be able to hear, or even a Guwahati medium wave will also be. Uh, you, you may hear here at uh, Dibrugar or maybe somewhere closer to Dibrugar. So at night, what happens? The D region moves up, means it vanishes. So it is the T e only. Your anospheric height goes to 100 kilometer or more than, uh, say, uh, 95 kilometer or 100 kilometer, and therefore the range increases. The range for communication increases, and therefore you get. Uh, to listen to stations from far compared to what you listen to in the daytime. So that is that is the significance of the D region. Now another point, <clears throat> because this D region, D region is uh, created by hard X-rays as well as cosmic rays and also your your Lehman alpha. Now during solar flare during solar flare what happens is uh, this uh, x-rays or um, solar ionizing radiation slim and alpha they become very strong they uh, solar flare, flare if, if you uh, now now you are familiar it is a very strong burst of energy but short duration maybe a few hours or so so during that period during that period if the solar ionizing radiations, if it is <clears throat> daytime, they travel to the D region and ionize more, ionize more, produce more ionization as a, um, uh, and sometimes almost this D region uh, will absorb, will absorb any radio wave. So you may, you may have uh, a blank ionogram. You may have, you may see a blank ionogram during a solar flare. Uh, if you if if that solar flare is quite strong and your ionograms are also ionograms are also continuously being recorded. So we have uh, one or two examples of uh, those uh, instances or events that the D region blocks all communication. Delusion blocks all communication during solar flares. It absorbs. It absorbs the uh, radio wave 
going from the ground. That means going through it, and uh, um, therefore it becomes so strong that dirigium annihilation becomes so strong that the other upper half, upper, upper part of the ionosphere, E or F, is blocked. So you do not get any ionogram. The, the radio wave does not come back. We have examples of that. Uh, you, may, you may try to see, um, maybe Vitov has uh, with him, or maybe I may also have, but the point is, the point is that D region can absorb the whole of the radio waves going to it or going through it during a solar flare. That means during a solar flare, because of the strong increase in the ionizing radiation's intensity, the D region also becomes very, very strong. Okay. So now let me uh, present means go to go to today's topic e, e and f okay so actually what i was uh, looking at is uh, just a minute just a minute yes uh, is this visible yes sir it is visible, no? Okay. So, oh, now it has gone. No, I, I, I have just... Oh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, I am I'm presenting. It will come, it will come. I will make it a uh, large screen. So, uh, okay. Uh, that means... These are only a few uh, set of equations. There are three sets of equations. You can write it down. Uh, for for just to <clears throat> keep it in mind or refresh your memory afterwards, that photoionization, photoionization in the ENF region, in the ENF region, will mostly of N two O and O two, because because the uh, the other <clears throat> other species h and h will also be there but we are not taking into account that because they are much less compared to o therefore these are the equations you can have the photoionization photoionization n2 dissociated to electron and n2 plus okay then this charge transfer reaction these are recombination reactions too n2 plus combines with an o becomes N and NO plus, N2 plus and E becomes N and N, two nitrogen atoms. O plus H nu. This is the most important reaction or process in the uh, ionosphere, upper ionosphere means E and F region, or particularly F region, O plus H nu. Then it becomes one E and one O plus, so O plus can combine with an N2 become NO plus and N, and this NO plus can combine with an electron becomes N plus O, okay? So here, what we have seen, one N2 becoming N2 plus, that N2 plus combining with O becoming NO plus, we have another NO plus reaction, means another reaction which gives us NO plus, that is O plus plus N2, okay? O plus plus N2, this one. The second reaction, the second reaction O plus, combining with an N2 gives you NO plus. So we have two NO plus here, but I will come to what, what is important of these two reactions. And NO plus and E becomes N plus O, okay? Then the third reaction is your O2 plus H nu. So O2 plus, it becomes the O2 ion plus electron. O plus plus O2, O plus O2 plus. So O2 plus, again, that means this, this is charge transfer. The, this charge, positive charge is transferred to the O2 molecule. From the O atom, it is transferred to the molecule and the molecule becomes charged 
So this molecule, charged molecule, positively charged, combining with an electron will give you O and O, two O atoms. So because of, uh, due to the recombination, we will get from this O2, starting from this O2, one O2 molecule will give us two O atoms, okay? But O plus, this O plus cannot combine directly, um, here we have written that, it cannot combine directly with E. We, we could have written that also, O plus plus E becoming an O, okay? But that reaction is not possible. Or even if it is possible, it will be very, very slow. Why? Because for conservation of momentum and energy, that reaction will, will require emission of a photon, okay? So that reaction will be very slow. That reaction will be very slow. And also, uh, it may have that, that this reaction, that uh, three-body reaction we have written earlier, O plus can combine with an uh, O2 plus N, and then it, it, it converts to, it converts to that uh, the other <coughs> species. So the three-body collision, three-body collision, while discussing D, we were discussing this also. The three-body collision is uh, possible only in the lower atmosphere or lower ionosphere. So it is rare in EMF region. Therefore, O plus directly does do not combine with an electron in the ENF region. Keep that in mind. O plus will, will form. O plus will form. But <clears throat> this O plus uh, will uh, be, O plus will form from this equation, this equation, O plus, this equation. So this O plus cannot combine with an electron directly as we have seen and uh, or as we as we have noted that it needs uh, conservation of momentum and energy and also if it has to combine through a three body reaction for the three body um, molecular oxygen or molecular nitrogen is rare in the ENF region, okay? So another point that is about O plus, another point, N2 plus is virtually absent. N2 plus, N2 plus is not available in the ENF region because N2, N2 is uh, present up to about 100 kilometer or even less than that and uh, it means heavier molecules, heavier molecules. And so what you get, what you get this reaction, the first reaction, first charge transfer reaction, this one, N2 plus plus O, forming an nitrogen atom and NO plus. This reaction is very, very rare. This reaction is very, very rare in the ENF region. And therefore, in the ENF region, NO plus will form only through this reaction. O plus plus N2. O plus combining with a nitrogen molecule, giving you NO plus and a nitrogen atom. Okay, so these are the reactions, three reactions. One, O plus combining with another uh, molecule, then transferring the charge, becoming ONO. Here, O plus combining with N2, becoming an NO plus and this NO plus and E becoming N plus O. This is recombination, okay? So, uh, <clears throat> when you have only only O, only O, uh, so in, in here, this O plus O, they will leave this O2 plus plus E are, uh, will produce O and O, this will be in the excited state. This, both this O, they, 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 they are not in the ground state, they will be in the excited state and therefore they will give rise to air glows. Air glows means uh, it will glow, night glows. It, that O gives you uh, at, at 
frequency or, or wavelength of 536 nanometer or so, it will give you an air glow. Okay, forget about that. Now let us come to these three reactions. One is red Q. Red Q means production rate. Producing what? H nu hitting an O atom, which is available, producing an O plus an electron. So del del T, del del T O plus becomes equal to Q K O plus N2. Q K O plus N2. This rate coefficient because N2 is there. So this K is the rate coefficient. K, Q is production coefficient, Q, K is the rate coefficient, rate means the rate at which these reactions can occur, rate at which the reaction can occur, Q is the rate at which the production can occur, ionization, ionization rate, Q is your ionization rate, K is your uh, recombination rate. Alpha. Alpha is also recombination rate. This is K, the reaction rate for this, Q minus this. O plus plus N2, as we have said, O plus will react with N2, becoming an NO plus. The other reaction, N2 uh, plus <coughs> the first reaction, as we have said, N2 plus is, N2 plus is not uh, present or very little, therefore N2 plus is not there. What, what we get? NO plus from this reaction only. O plus plus N2. O plus plus N2, so NO plus plus N. So del del T of NO plus, the, the rate of change of the NO plus concentration with respect to time. This is rate of change of O plus concentration with respect to time. This is square bracket. De defines concentration, you know. So this is K O plus N2 plus minus alpha NO plus NE. So this is, this is this K O plus N2, O plus, because O plus has to be produced, O plus has to be produced, N2 has to be present. So this is the reaction, this is the reaction or rate at which this reaction will take place, combining O plus and N2 to become an NO plus and NE, and alpha is your rate coefficient, okay? So NO plus then combines with an electron, becomes an NNO, so del del D of NE, the electron, rate of change of the uh, electron, number density of electron, is equal to Q minus alpha NO plus NE, this one, this one, okay? Now what happens? <clears throat> Keeping these three equations in mind, if you have noted down, that is also fine. These three equations are the important equations in the ENF region. How, how they define the ENF region, we'll see now, we'll see now. These three equations define the F E and F region. Okay? Define means ionization in the F E and F region. So at lower heights, at lower heights, what happens? You have plenty of N2. N2 is number density of N2 will be large. So O plus will rapidly convert to NO plus, this second reaction. The second reaction will take place very easily because you have a lot of N2 plus. So uh, O plus colliding with an N2 plus will be, uh, will be more, the frequency of collision will be more, and therefore you get more of NO plus, okay? So NO plus uh, then rapidly converts to E because electrons are already present, so uh, NO plus becomes uh, NO, and therefore it becomes equal to NE. So all ions here in the, in the lower ionosphere, not, we are not talking about D, we are talking about E. So if we consider the E to be the lower ionosphere at this point of time, then here your NO plus is the uh, largest species, largest number of species you can see. So 
NO plus is equivalent to any, nearly equal, nearly equal to any. So your third equation, this equation, NO plus plus E, N plus O, del del T, N E, Q minus this one, del del T, N E, or del N E del T is equal to zero, Q minus alpha N E square, okay? <clears throat> When, when your all the all the no plus becomes equal to any, okay. So there is no change. There is no change in the concentration of any. When there is no change in the concentration of any, when del any del t is equal to zero, q minus this q minus alpha any square is also equal to zero, okay. So any any becomes equal to any becomes equal to n no plus. So put any here, so it becomes n e square. So q minus alpha n e square. So this is a very familiar equation. We have already, we, from Chapman's layer discussion, we already know that n e is equal to e square root of q minus alpha. So this is an alpha Chapman layer. So e layer, e layer basically is an alpha Chapman layer because of the presence of, the large presence of n2 large presence of N2, which gives you abundant NO plus, which again combines very quickly to NO, NNO, and therefore the rate at which this N2 converts to NO plus is very quick, and number of NO plus being large becomes nearly equal to N E, the negative charge. So positive ions, N O plus becomes negative, equal to negative electrons in the E region. And therefore, by uh, the, this equation, logic of this equation, equation three, you get Q minus alpha N E square because one N E number of N E is equal to N O plus N O plus number of ions equal to number of electrons N E N E this one. So alpha N E square and therefore this is Q by alpha. So here you do not get any beta. You have not seen any beta. So N E is a, in this particular area that means in the E region will be an alpha Chapman layer, or E is an alpha Chapman layer. Now what happens if you go up? In the F2 layer, we'll, we'll come to F1, F1 a little later. Now here, N2 is scarce. Because you are going up, you are going up so, less and less n2 we, we, if you if you remember the distribution of the distribution of the neutral spaces n2 will be very rare at f region heights that means 250 kilometer or 200 kilometer 300 kilometer n2 will be much less compared to what it is at 100 kilometer or lower than 100 kilometer so n2 is less so or say minimum. Then what happens? Where from the ionization will come? O only. So your second equation, O plus is very slowly converted into NO plus because N2 is less. One, O plus will rarely find or hit or collide with another, uh, with, with an N2 molecule and therefore this reaction, the second reaction will be uh, not, uh, I won't say not possible, but it will be rare, okay? So again, NO plus once formed, it becomes uh, uh, recombines quickly uh, like this equation. So here in the F2 region, all ions are O plus. So O plus is equal to any. O plus, concentration of O plus is equal to N. You do not have NO plus. NO plus will convert to, convert to uh, this uh, NO, NO, 
and e so n and o so e and you get you get this this one very quick very quickly it will happen because lot of electrons will be always present and therefore what happens your your uh, whole ionosphere will be full of only o plus ions f2 region okay so then where from we get this o plus ions this equation first equation o plus o plus h nu one photon hitting an o energetic photon hitting an o becomes o plus an e so your del del t del o plus del t becomes equal to uh, when 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 in the steady state in the steady state means when there is no further production when there is no further production then your your q this del del t change in the rate of concentration of o plus with respect to time at some point of time will become equal to zero that means you can have maximum production that is what we have been talking about you can have maximum production during a particular point of time normally during noon time or around around noon time or afternoon you will have maximum production after that it will not it will not uh, continue to produce it will not continue to produce okay so <clears throat> because of the balance so uh, del o plus del t becomes equal to zero in the steady state and therefore q becomes equal to here this q becomes equal to this k o plus n e this one q is equal q q minus sorry zero becomes equal to q minus beta n e beta n e okay so now beta n comes here. Where from it comes? This k n two. K n two. K n two. N two is there. N two is there. You have uh, this. So k o plus concentration of o plus n two plus. So we can have uh, this constant where beta is equal to k n two concentration of n two. Uh, any is your O plus. O plus is your any, this one. O plus is your any. So Q minus beta any in the steady state. So any becomes equal to Q by beta. And this is proportional to O by N2, concentration of O divided by concentration of N2. Okay, Q by beta. Q by beta becomes equal to concentration of O is proportional to the ratio of O by N2, okay? This one, N2, N2, N2 comes here, but this is beta, and your, your Q is only O, Q is only O here. So you get, <clears throat> you get N e equal to Q by beta, proportional to O by N2. And what it is supposed to be? It is supposed to increase upward. Why? O, concentration of O will be more as we go higher up. As we, as we go high up in the, in, in altitudes, altitudes, or, or the, with increasing altitude, O will increase n2 will decrease and therefore this ratio will increase and n is supposed to increase n is supposed to increase okay so in the f region electron density will continue to rise or increase because of the rise in the o by n2 ratio this is a very important parameter actually this o by n2 we have uh, uh, tried to explain many things using um, o, o by n2 measurements. In, in, in many number of our papers, we have shown how O by n2 uh, defines or, or controls the changes or, or temp temporal variations in the ionosphere. So this is a very important ratio, O by n2, neutral. They are neutral, but they control. 
they are neutral, but their ratio controls the amount of electrons or ions in the F region. Okay. Now, what happens in the intermediate layer? Intermediate layer means E and F2. So, in between, we have F1. So, that F1, if we go back to your, your Chapman's equation, 1 by Q is equal to 1 by alpha Ne square plus 1 by beta Ne. In the intermediate layer, 1 by Q becomes equal to this uh, reciprocal of one alpha Ne square and plus beta Ne. So, this is a quadratic equation. You can solve this quadratic equation by yourself, and it is written here. N is equal to half of Q by beta, 1 plus square root of 1 plus 4Z. So Z is a constant. Z is a constant or, say, a variable constant. Is equal to beta square divided by alpha Q. So all these are, these are coefficients. Beta is a, is a coefficient, alpha is also coefficient, Q is also a, a rate, all these are rates, beta, alpha, Q. Okay, so Z can uh, be more or less, depending on where you are, or at what time you are looking at, okay? So depending on your, your time of observation, depending on the height of observation, this Z will, Z will vary, Z will vary. So it is, uh, we are actually, we won't say Z is a constant. We will say that we are replacing this beta square by alpha Q with a term Z. We are replacing this alpha beta, this term beta square by alpha Q with a uh, term Z for convenience to make it simple. Okay? Now what happens? If Z is more than one, large, if Z is very large, say that means beta is large, beta is large, and this is already a squared. So if Z is large, more than one, large means this is ratio, so it can be one, less than one, or more than one, okay? So if it is large, that means it is more than one, then what happens? This is uh, any, any is, uh, is, is, uh, more than one or any is large, any is large, because you have uh, this, these uh, fixed values, Q and beta, one plus square root of one plus four Z, okay? Say, uh, Z is equal to two. I, I, I will just give you an example, simple example. Say Z is equal to two, okay? So four into two, eight, plus one, nine. So square root of nine is three. So one plus three is four. So this whole quantity outside the parenthesis is multiplied four times. You get half of Q by beta. That means twice Q by beta. Two times Q by beta you get when Z is equal to two. When Z is equal to two, this whole uh, term increases by four times, okay? That means twice actually, because two is here in the denominator. So Q by two Q by beta, it will be two Q by beta. So any will similarly increase because uh, two times, it will increase two times. Now here, suppose if this is one only, so one plus one, two, three, square root of, um, uh, square root of two, so some value plus one, smaller value. But if it is more than one, if it is more than one, then you have a positive any, positively increasing any. Now, if if z is less than one, less than one means a fraction. Okay, less than one will be a fraction. So this four, four will be then small. Four into multiplied by a fraction, say point five. 0 0.2, 0 0.3, less than one, can, it can be anything. So this will be a small number. Added to this will be again a small number, and therefore any will be less. Any will be less, okay? So what happens, what happens 
this is this. So if we have a large Z, if we have a large Z, then you get a marked F1 ledge. Ledge means, uh, if, if you remember the, the profile, if you remember the profile, normally from E to F1, sorry, F2, E to F2, it is a smooth parabolic, okay? But if F1 is present, if F1 is present, then you get a, a kind of a small bulge, a small bulge that is increasing the number density, increasing the number density during the F1, within the F1 layer, and that is called that ledge. Ledge, ledge means a, a kind of a bulge going, going, from the, going out from the normal, so normal parabolic shape. So that is seen in, in your ionograms when you have Z more than one. Large. This is not only more than one, it is quite large compared to one. Z can be quite large compared to one for uh, when F1 is present. But when uh, it is very, very small compared to one, that it that second time itself becomes small or negligible. It is only one. So any is less. Any is much less. So this gives a clue as to why F1 lays is sometimes seen and sometimes not. Sometimes F1 is present, sometimes F1 is not present, okay? So when Z is equal to beta square, this is, beta is proportional to N2, okay? So Z gets bigger if N2 is more. If N2 is more, if N2, beta, beta is proportional to N2, okay? Another point. Another point, beta is proportional to N2, okay? So, when N2 is present in large numbers, say in summer, you are, suppose, because this is beta, beta is uh, in the numerator, so if it is large, if it is large, then, then you get a large Z, and so an F1 list. So, in summer, you are likely to see the F1 more. Similarly, you get a higher, higher uh, Z because your Q is higher or Q, the production rate is more in uh, during high solar activity. Production rate is more during high solar activity. So during high solar activity or during summer, you are likely to see more F1. F1, we do not always see, though it is possible because of these reasons, because of this the, uh, change in beta and uh, uh, beta and your alpha, Q may be same, Q may be remaining same, but beta and alpha. So, and at, at, at uh, say, because this is Q, so Q production rate, production rate, production rate will be uh, at the zenith production rate is maximum. Okay, we know. And as, as you increase the zenith angle towards towards the horizon, your Q will be much less. It will be always uh, multiplied by or, uh, or <coughs> qualified by that second chi, okay? So your, your uh, Q will be less. Your Q will be less at, at lower zenith angle. And uh, therefore, you have uh, sometimes you see F1 better during when Q is very, very small or, or you, you, if there is no production, then you may have F1. Therefore, this Q, Q if it is zero, not exactly zero, nearly zero, because if it is zero, then this becomes infinite. It cannot be like that. So uh, when Q becomes nearly equal to zero, beta Z will be very, very large. So during solar eclipse also, during solar eclipse also, F1 lasers have been seen. F1 lasers have been seen, okay? Okay, then coming to, coming to again F2 layer. So the equation, N is equal to Q by beta, O by N2. This is the principal uh, coefficients as well as the neutrals which determines the F2 layer. So total number of 
electrons in the F2 layer will depend on the production and the coefficient. This is the recombination coefficient. So beta, beta and Q will determine the amount of Ne. Okay. So O by N2, and because these two are proportional to O by N2, so O by N2 will control the electron density in the F2 region above the F1 peak. So this is above the F1 peak. Okay. But uh, if we say that uh, because of this reaction, because, because O increases continuously with height with respect to O N2, so N should also continuously increase with height. That means there should be no F2 peak. Hmm? Get the point? If I say, I have been telling you that O will continue to increase with height, N2 will continue to decrease with height. So this ratio with height will increase. And if it increases because N is equal to this or proportional to this, N will also continuously increase. So where does it stop? Or why does it stop? <coughs> because to, to, to get the F2 layer, F2 layer or F2 peak, it, it must remain, uh, means it must reach a height where any is maximum. From where? The temperature. In the thermosphere, in the thermosphere, the, the temperature never decreases, like in the other lower atmosphere. In the, in the troposphere, and in the in the uh, mesosphere temperature decreases in the in the stratosphere temperature increases so increase and decrease are there up to the mesosphere but in the thermosphere it will continuously increase so o by n2 because this ratio is increasing n should also continuously increase so we won't get an f2 layer F2 layer or F2 peak it will be continuously increasing F2. So you get higher density or you should get higher density and as high as you can go. Okay, But that is not possible. That is not possible. That is not uh, the case because you have this production and loss processes. These production and loss processes becomes weaker. That means this recombination will become weaker and uh, <clears throat> the process itself process itself the dn dt is equal to q minus loss the process itself becomes slow as you go up and with increasing height and they are will be, they will prevent that that will prevent the electrons and ions from taking up a gravitational control distribution with any decreasing upward so any any at some point, any at some point will decrease. Any at some point will decrease. We'll see, we'll, we'll come to those equations because, because so far we are talking about only production and loss. That's why we cannot explain why your, your any will give you a distribution which we see any gives a distribution that uh, it increases with height uh, around uh, E layer, then F layer, then F F1 layer, then F2 layer, and decreases. But as we have shown in this particular equation, the equation mm -hmm. N is equal to Q by beta or O by N to ratio, what we will see is a continuously increasing ionosphere or ion density. Continuously increasing plasma density in the ionosphere. That is not possible because, because we have to take into account the other loss part. It is not only Q minus loss, but divergence also in the continuity equation, divergence also should be taken into account. That is what I'm trying to show in the next 
three equations. <clears throat> so you see, these are the three equations which actually determine the, the, the number density of ions or electrons in the ionosphere. Okay, so far, Chapman assumed a very, very uh, ideal atmosphere. Then he also assumed that there can be only two, two processes, one production and one loss. But now we know that with production and loss, there should or there could be always some transport or divergence. So because of that, because of that, the number of ions or electrons produced will always change, even if that Q and L remain same. Even if Q and L, suppose you could make this here in the continuity equation, number of particles or number of ions or electrons is equal to production minus loss. This is recombination and attachment. This is loss. This is a normal loss, which we have so far been discussing. Recombination plus attachment. But you have this diffusion and drift. The electrons and ions as a plasma may drift because of different reasons. One is the neutral wind. The wind may push the electrons and ions or the plasma from one place to another. And because the magnetic field is also there, you can have diffusion. Diffusion means gradients. Gradients when you when the ions and electrons or the plasma uh, face a gradient, then it will it will go from the higher pressure level to the lower pressure level. So you have the diffusion. I think if you have read this, read plasma physics already, you should know this or or you would at least recall these uh, terms diffusion. Uh, you, you can always have a diffusion coefficient and then this drift in plasma. So, <clears throat> in the continuity equation, we are now coming uh, out of the, the uh, Chapman mindset. Okay, the Chapman mindset is or Chapman, uh, Chapman determined or we have been so far bound by this only production and loss mechanism. Now we are bringing in diffusion and drift. This is, you can see, it is always plus minus. Plus minus means your diffusion can be either way. Similarly, drift. Drift can be uh, towards you or going away from you. Similarly, diffusion can be towards you or going away from you. If you consider a box, then this plasma can enter the box from outside or from the box go to the outside environment. So it is like this, the movement transfer can be through the walls of the box. Equation of momentum. These are also important because you, you do not have only production and loss and diffusion and drift because these particles, when they move, you have momentum. So for momentum, you need a driving force. Hmm? Force only will produce momentum. So you need a driving force. But the driving force, when it is pushing the, pushing the ions or electrons from one place to another, there will be a drag also because these ions and electrons will, 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 will uh, hit the uh, normal neutral atoms and molecules. So there will be a drag, uh, like like when you push anything, push anything on a surface or even through your atmosphere, normal atmosphere, there is always a drag. It is not, uh, not a zero atmosphere. So you will always have a drag. So driving force plus drag plus advection and viscosity. Viscosity will be there that, that, that uh, this uh, whole uh, <coughs> plasma can be viscous. So you have this plus minus viscosity also. Similarly, because it is a plasma, these charged particles, these charged particles are produced because of the energy absorbed by the atoms and molecules from the 
solar radiations. So you are heating the environment or the gas molecules which absorb this will become heated, transfer the uh, heat to the electrons as well as the ions. So the heat balance, heat balance in the whole atmosphere will also differ. Heat balance will also be different. So temperature, heating will take place because of your ultraviolet rays, because of your X-rays, and if particles also heat, particles means in this case, highly energetic particles which heat the uh, ionosphere at the poles during solar flares or, or solar storms, okay, CMEs. So heating, heating takes place of the uh, ionospheric environment or, or the upper atmospheric environment. Cooling, when there is heating, there will always be cooling also. You cannot have a heating without cooling. So cooling will be there. And how cooling will be there? Radiation, the, the, the environment or, or the charged uh, plasma will slowly cool because of the radiation. It will, it will try to, it will try to uh, cool down. It will try to cool down by radiating the uh, heat to, uh, to the uh, to the surrounding environment. And then you have conduction and convection. This conduction, uh, conduction and convection, normal, normal your heating, when, when you have a uh, medium, the heat will be conducted or heat can be convected. So that will also take place. So the plus minus conduction, convection, heating, cooling. So that will control your temperature. Momentum will be due to the driving force and then drag. Along with that, you can also have viscosity the, because this, this will have a sum because this is a fluid. So you will have viscosity. The plasma will be considered as a fluid when it is moving through air. Keep those things in mind. The plasma will be a fluid. We are considering this as a fluid. So because it is moving, it is moving within the within the um, the gases, neutral gases. So it is a fluid. So that fluid is always viscous. You cannot have a fluid without viscosity. Okay, zero viscosity is no fluid. So your three sets of equations: continuity equation, production, recombination, and diffusion and drift, and other two equations determine the momentum and energy. Temperature is energy on the heat balance. Okay. So this is how you define your ionosphere. True ionosphere. For, for uh, defining the true ionosphere, in addition to what Chapman has proposed, those production and loss terms, we need to bring into account the divergence term in the continuity equation. And at the same time, and at the same time, we must also consider the momentum and energy balance. Because these ions and electrons, they are not static. They are moving. They will move. And if they move, there is some momentum. Any, any body moving will have a momentum. So that momentum will come from some force. That force may be anything. That force may be anything. So you have a force, that, that force which pushes the, the ions and electrons or the plasma. And then because it is moving through the atmosphere, it will also be dragged, dragged backward. So drag, like like when your satellites, these satellites, they, their lifetime reduces. They are, once they are in the lower atmosphere, their lifetime reduces very fast because of the drag only. When it is moving, when the satellite is moving through the, through the atmosphere, through the atmosphere, it will be dragged backward. Anything, you, you move anything, you, you, you send anything in projectile, it will always be a, a deterrent force also because of the drag. So that is there. 
And in the third equation, you have the energy balance. Okay. So I think uh, I will uh, stop here for today. Yes, sir. Uh, tomorrow, uh, if possible, I will complete what happens in the F2 region. We'll discuss it more because these are important equations. Maybe uh, it may not be from your point of view of uh, your your exam, which is coming. Uh, that your teachers will know what questions to ask or not. But from my point of view, the physical processes, the physical processes are always controlled by the equations which govern this whole uh, medium. Okay, so we will look into the, the equations and try to see. Try to see. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir.